Everyone, welcome. My name is Menachem Creditor. It's my honor to serve as scholar in residence and rabbi for UJA Federation of New York. We bring you Torah and music blessing and community every weekday. We've been doing so since March 18th, 2020. Today is July 26th, 2024. That's four and a half years of Torah every single day with friends from all over the world just saying good morning, saying hello by name, being happy to see each other, facing the world as it is, and knowing that when we face it together, we are stronger. So Penny, it's good to see you. Adele, Isaiah Rothstein, my beautiful rabbi friend, my brother, it's good to see you. Shafta Shush, good to see you. Susie, sending love. Penny, thanks for reminding us. It is broadcast 1,102. It is also day 294 since October 7th. It's good to see all of you here. Let's see who's here on Facebook. Jacqueline, sending love. Fabrice, your best childhood friend, Stephanie, is fighting cancer uh, and sending, sending him prayers, his family, and you comfort. Linda, Barry, Jonathan, Hannah, Shari, good to see you. Hope that everything is well. Shari, you're being transferred from the hospital to rehab tomorrow, please God. It should go well. You should heal completely. Lydia and Amy, Sharon and Arlene, Jerry and Linda, good to see you. Hi, Ron. Chana Booker Tov, Shabbat Shalom. It's good to see everybody. If I've missed anyone, my apologies. The screen is jumping around a little bit. Susan and Ellen, Helen, Diane, Boker Tov, good to see you. Okay. Kim, lovely to see you. Friends, let's take a breath, sing a blessing, learn some Torah. Here we go. Good to see all of you. I saw a few notes above while while we were singing the bracha. Let me see. Nat Natalia, praying for you. You have a brain MRI today. May things go well. May it discover that everything is okay. Um, Deborah, today is the second yurt site for your beloved Joe, sending you uh, comfort, and his memory should be for a blessing. And there was one more. If I missed. Friends, something significant that one of you shared. My apologies. The screen was scrolling while we were singing the bracha. Um, I hope that all of you are well. I hope that all of you are well. That's really, that's really the biggest tefillah that I could possibly offer. All right. Um, also, just a point of information so that you know, um, starting Monday, I'll be in Israel for a week. Um, and that means that my schedule will hopefully not be disrupted from being able to broadcast at 9 o'clock. It might be a little bit different. I will do my best to keep it regular. Um, we are, um, I'll be traveling with 20 colleagues um, from UJA on a volunteer solidarity mission. Uh, and I am so excited to be there, to be hands-on with many of our grantees and our partners on the ground in Israel. 
Um, I am so grateful to Sari Farrow, for those of you who might know her. It was her initiative that led to this trip happening, and we are going to be heart to heart and shoulder to shoulder with our sisters and brothers on the ground. I'll broadcast from there, and if there are any disruptions to the schedule, please check Facebook. I won't be able to broadcast on Instagram um, at the same time. Uh, but now let's get to Torah. Let's get to Torah. As always, there's a lot going on um, in our world and in our Parsha. Let's focus on the Parsha. There's one aspect of Parshat Pinchas that we haven't looked at yet this week. It's a very famous section, and I was saving it for Friday just to go into Shabbos thinking about it. It is a beautiful thing to see when tradition evolves, when change happens in tradition. Meaning many people think that change is the opposite of tradition. But actually, the beauty of Judaism, the beauty of Torah itself, is that change is part of the sacred process. It's not a modern response to tradition that leads to change. It's that the Torah demonstrates the capacity for growth and learning. Even on a theological level, though this might strike you as strange, God has emotions and responds, discovers things. I know that doesn't sound like what we've taught to think about God, like what we've been taught to think about God, but in fact, God grows and respects humanity enough to partner with us and learn from us sometimes. Of course, we are humbled and learn from God too. But in the Torah's text, here is an example in Parshat Pinchas that is worthy of real, real considerable study and time. I want to read to you the section. This is Numbers chapter 27, if you want to look it up, right at the beginning of the, of the chapter. I'll read the Hebrew for the first verse and then the rest in English. The daughters of Tzlovchad, that was his name, Tzlovchad, the daughters of Tzlovchad of the tribe of Menashe, son of Chefer, son of Gilad, son of Machir, son of Menashe, son of Yosef. I just want you to realize how many times I said son of. The Torah doesn't waste words. These are the sons, but now we hear the daughters, which is significant in the Torah because women are not often named in the Torah. It's a challenge in the biblical text. And as we speak about sons, here is mine. My son Moshe at Camp Ramah in Georgia is on Instagram. I love you, Moshe. So glad you're here. So speaking of children, the daughters of Tzlovchad, their names are all offered here in this verse. Machla, Noah, Chogla, Milka, and Tirza. Now, what, what happens here? This is a very significant moment in the Torah. They stood before Moses, <clears throat> Elazar the priest, the chieftains, and the whole assembly at the entrance of the tent of meeting, and they said, Our father died in the Midbar, in the wilderness. He was not one of the faction, Korach's faction, which banded together against God. So he wasn't a bad guy. He died for his own sin. He lived his own life. He wasn't part of that camp. He died for his own sin, and he left no sons. And that's significant. Why? She, they, they claim here to Moses, Let not our father's name be lost to his clan just because he had no son. Give us a holding among our father's kinsmen. Now, I want you to notice that in this Parsha, what we hear before the section that we just read is all about inheritance laws. And in the world of the Torah, women did not inherit, not until now. Five daughters of Tzlovchad, five daughters who did not have brothers, go to Moses and say, this is not right. Why should our family's name be erased just because there are no sons? We are daughters. Don't women have the right to continue the legacy of a people? It's a very big question. 
and Moses brought their case before God, is verse 5. How important it is for us to see a few things here. Number one is a challenge to the way things have been. That's important. Two, organizing in order to make a claim. All five of them show up together. Unity in the family in order to make a claim. In addition to which, they go to Moses, and Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses our teacher, does not answer the question, which suggests that perhaps the answer has not been presented yet. If things must always be the way they were, he could answer, that's not how we do it. But he does not do that. He hears their claim and in effect says, I don't know. That is a magnificent, magnificent attribute of a leader, to know when you don't know. And Moshe turns to God, and God says right back to Moshe, Cain benot Slovchot dovrot. The plea of Slovchot's daughters, Slovchot's daughters, is true. They have spoken correctly. You should give them a hereditary holding among their father's kinsmen, transfer their father's share to them. Further, says God in the Torah, speak to the Israelite people as follows. If a householder dies without leaving a son, you shall transfer his property to his daughter. So not only do the daughters of Slavchad organize and present to Moshe, the daughters of Slavchad organize, present to Moshe. Moshe has the humility to say, I don't know, to turn to God for an answer. And then God not only says they're right, God bases future decisions on this precedent by organizing and making a claim, bringing it to a respected authority who through their humility deserves that respect. Things can change. It is a hopeful note at the end of this Parsha, how important it is for us to recognize the multiple layers of what makes it so important. Number one, things don't always stay the same. Two, God is part of the process of change. Three, when things change, and they change in a way that shows respect for the process, everyone benefits, even future people. So I want to bless us with a little bit of hope that things might change, that we might bring things forward, that when we organize and we fight for change, that is a way of showing respect for the system that can change. There are others who believe that the system needs to be burned down, and we have witnessed way too much of that. That's not the way to make things better. What a gift it is to see a humble leader. What a gift it is to know that women inherit. What a gift it is to see the possibilities alive within God's own process within the Torah text. It's not a modern Midrash. Nothing I've shared with today has been Midrash. All of that has been within the biblical text. What a gift it is to know that things change. God changes. We all grow, even at one level of biblical text, how much more so as students of that text, as children of God, one and all. So the blessing that I would wish us this Shabbat, on this 204th day, since October, 294th day, since October 7th, is to remember that things can change for the better that when we work together, really work together, with humble, fierce spirits, things can change for the better. Look what we can do. Look what our matriarchs showed us. Look at what's possible. We can grow. So friends, let's take a breath. Before we sing Hatikva today, before we get ready for Shabbos, let's reaffirm the hope in our hearts. 
Let's reaffirm the capacity that we have as a community that has come together 1,102 times so far to learn, to comfort, to heal, to grow. How lucky we are to have Torah and each other. Ashrenu matov chelkenu. How happy we should feel that this is our portion. We found each other, friends. Let's pray. Let's pray that things can change for the better, that our family can be made whole, that peace might one day still be possible, that the world could have a better day tomorrow than it did yesterday. Kolon baleva penima nefesh Yehudi homia ulefate mizrach kadima ayin letzion sofia olo avda. Tikvatenu Hatikva bat Shnot alpayim Liot am hofshi Beyar Zenu Eret Zion Virushalayim Liot am hofshi Beyar Zenu Eretz Zion Virushalai. Bring them home now. Am Yisrael Chai. Friends, have a beautiful Shabbat. I'll be talking to you from Israel on Monday. Can't wait. Am Yisrael Chai. Shabbat Shalom.